Hello? Is anyone here? Um, let me get the lights. Pip, Paws, Yellow, Green, Bluebird, Billy, Witty, Charlie? Anybody? Oh, hi everyone, you're all here. I was hoping someone would be here to help me with today's Bible story. In today's story, I have to build a huge temple and I can't do that all by myself. But why don't we get started and hopefully someone will show up. Will you come sit crisscross applesauce with me? Great job. Let's put one finger up and do our ready rhyme. Ready? Voices disappear as we wiggle our ears. Let's be wise and open our eyes. Shake out the wiggles. Shh, no giggles. Into church we go so God can help us grow, grow, grow. Great job, friends. That's what we're going to do today. Grow, grow, grow as we learn more about Jesus. Remember, we've learned about priests like Eli who lead the church. We've learned about prophets like Samuel who hear messages from God and speak them to the people. And we've learned about kings like Saul and David. Today, we're going to learn about Israel's next king, King Solomon. But no one's here yet, so I guess we'll just do our key passage and see if anyone gets here. Let me grab it out of the treasure box, because remember, the key passage is from the Bible, so it's more valuable than gold or candy or money. Let me grab it. We have a new key passage for today. It's from 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 and 18. It says, never stop praying, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Let's learn some hand motions to practice it together. When we say never stop praying, let's do never stop praying. And then when we say give thanks, can you go like this? And then when we say in all circumstances, go like this. And then when we say, for this is God's will, point up. And then when we say, for you, point out. And when we say, belong to Christ Jesus, make a cross. Got it? All right, let's put it all together. Never stop praying. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 through 18. Let's do it one more time. Ready? Never stop praying, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 through 18. Great job, friends. Anyone here yet? Nope. I don't know what we're going to do now. I can't build the temple all by myself. Yes, it's mail time. Maybe Mailbox can stay and help me build the temple. Let's go find out. Hi, Mailbox. Hi, Miss Ashley. I've got your mail. Aw, you don't want to, like, tell me a joke first? Just straight to the mail? Oh, sorry, Miss Ashley. Did you want to hear a joke? I just don't have a lot of time today. The semi-annual Delivering a Laugh Mailbox Comedy Convention is this afternoon. This year it's all online. I have to zoom in very soon. There's a mailbox comedy convention? There sure is, and it's a very prestigious invitation only. You know what that means, Miss Ashley? What? You're looking at one of the funniest mailboxes in the country. <laughs> oh, wow, mailbox. I am very impressed. So it starts really soon? Very soon. And it goes all day? All day. Aw, oh, man. What's wrong? I probably have time to tell you a quick joke if that's so important to you. It's not that mailbox. It's just that I really needed help telling the Bible story today and no one's here. What do you need help with? Well, our Bible story today is about the people building God a temple. And I can't do that all by myself. The temple is huge. Who have you asked though? I asked Billy and Bluebird, and they were going to ask Pip and Paws and Witty and Bobby and Yellow and Green and... Well, uh, uh, why don't you just ask our junior postmaster in training, Riley? Oh, that's a really good idea, Mailbox, but I don't have Riley's number. Oh, I do. May I have your phone, please? Sure, Mailbox. Here you go. Uh, okay, let me see here. Hello? Hi, Riley. It's Mailbox. 
box. Oh, hi, hi mailbox has uh has the delivery to laugh mailbox convention started yet? Wow, they are really close. It's about to. That's why I'm calling. I'm here with Miss Ashley, and she needs help. How can I help? I'll give her the phone. Hold on. Here, Miss Ashley. Uh... Hello? Hi, Miss Ashley. How can I help? Well, Riley, I have to build a huge temple today for our Bible story, and no one's here to help, and I can't do it all by myself. Building a temple? That sounds like a lot of work. It is a lot of work. So are you free? I'll come right over and I'll bring some backup. Wow, Riley's bringing backup? Calling Riley was a perfect idea. Thanks, mailbox. No problem, Miss Ashley. Now grab your mail, cause I gotta get going. Uh... <laughs> Thanks for the mail, mailbox. Enjoy your conference. Oh, I will. Bye, Miss Ashley. Bye, friends. Bye, mailbox. Howdy, Katie here. Hi, cowgirl Katie. What you doing? I was just heading home. What you need? Miss Ashley needs help. With a Bible story? With building a temple. Ain't no more. I'll grab my tuba and I'll meet you at the barn. Well, it sounds like Riley will be right over. Let's get ready to read our story and build that temple. Let me grab my Bible and we'll see what God has to say. <sighs> Aw, that sound is so lovely. Our story today is called Solomon Builds a Temple. But let's pray and talk to God together to get ourselves ready to read the Bible. Will you all clap with me on the count of three? Ready? One, two, three. Put your hands in your lap and repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for the Bible. Help us to be quiet and still so we can hear from you today. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. Awesome, now we're ready to read the Bible. We're, we're coming. coming. Yes, just in time. Phew, we made it. Did we miss anything, Ms. Ashley? Nope, we were just about to get started. Do you wanna say hi to my friends watching online? Hi. Howdy, y'all. Friends, why don't you say salutations, Riley? Salutations, friends. Now let's say yippee ki yay yay cowgirl Katie. yippee ki yay yay y'all. So how does our story start, Miss Ashley? Why don't you sit down and I'll tell you all about it. Our story today is about King Solomon. What happened to King Saul? And King David. Well, Saul was Israel's first king, but he wasn't a very good king because he didn't obey God. Because he didn't follow God's laws, he wasn't king for long. Then God picked David. David was a good king. Here you guys are right. David wasn't a perfect king because God's the only perfect king. But David was a really good king for 40 years. He loved and followed God. God promised David that as long as his family loved and followed God too, every king of Israel would be from their family. So King Solomon was King David's son? Yep, he was. In fact, before David died, David said to his son Solomon, be strong and follow God always. He wanted Solomon to know God's word, obey God's laws, and walk with God all the days of his life. Wow, David was a good daddy too. Did Solomon love and follow God like David? He did for a while. In fact, the Bible says that one night God talked to Solomon in a dream. God told Solomon that he could ask for anything he wanted and God would give it to him. Woo-wee! Anything you wanted, I'd ask for a donkey. Or a puppy. Or a fancy new hat. Or a new art set. Or some pigs for, for the farm. Or a new bike. Definitely a new bike. <laughs> Those are all lovely ideas. And they're definitely things that people would ask for. But you'll never guess what Solomon asked for. Uh, what does a king need? A new crown? Solomon asked for wisdom. Hold your horses. Solomon could have asked for anything. And he asked for wisdom? Uh, Miss Ashley, what is wisdom? Wisdom is what helps us know right from wrong. It helps us make good choices and lead others well. All right, I guess a king would need that. 
God was so pleased with Solomon that he gave Solomon more wisdom than anyone else. And he blessed him with riches, a long life, and honor. Wow, Solomon was a good king. Solomon was a really wise king because he wanted to follow God. But Solomon wasn't a perfect king. God's the only perfect king. That was a good story, Miss Ashley. Wait just a country minute. This story can be over yet. What about the temple? I brought my tool belt and everything. You're right, Katie. The story's not over yet. We're just getting to the temple. Temple's another word for a church, right? Were there no churches back in Bible times? There weren't any churches yet. There was a tabernacle. It was a special place where the people went to meet with God. But its walls were like a tent. It could be packed up and moved as the people moved from place to place. It was always temporary. King Solomon and King David both thought that there should be a permanent place to worship God. So Solomon built a temple. Why didn't David build it? Because God told him not to. The Bible says that God told David his heart was too focused on war and there was battles going on all around him. It wasn't time to build the temple yet. But God told David that his son would be the one to build the temple. So Solomon built the temple, right? What can we do? First, I need some wood. On, On it. it! Solomon ordered for the best wood to be prepared from the nearby cedar and cypress trees. We got the wood. What's next? Next, Solomon had his men gather costly stones for the bottom of the temple. Stones? By the creek! Let's go! Solomon wanted the best stones in all the land so that the temple would have a strong foundation. The prettiest stones in all the land. Those are perfect. Now, why don't we build that temple? Let's build it right over here. The temple was gorgeous inside and out. Solomon had a beautiful altar made inside for sacrifices. He also had detailed, gorgeous carvings and designs put all over the temple. Solomon had two cherubs made out of olive wood for the entranceway of the temple. The whole temple was covered in gold. It was breathtaking. Wow, you guys did really great. This looks awesome. Does this look like a real temple? Let me show you a picture of the one Solomon built. Wow, it's beautiful. Why was the temple so important to Solomon anyway? Well, the temple was a special place for the people to go and spend time with God. A temple was like a church, right? Uh-huh. Oh, man. What's wrong? I can only spend time with God when I'm at church? That stinks. But I thought we could talk to God whenever we wanted. We can. Here, let me show you guys something. Come here. Do you see this road? Yeah. This is the road between us and God. In a perfect world, we could walk straight to God and spend forever with Him in heaven. But because of our sin, we can't. Sin is everything we do to disobey God. Right, Miss Ashley? That's exactly right. And our sin breaks our perfect road to God. So if I hit my brother, it breaks the road? It sure does. What if I tell a really small lie that no one else even hears? That's sin too. Even if no one else hears us, God still knows when we sin. And it breaks our perfect road to Him. So sin means I can't be friends with God anymore? It does. That's a really serious punishment. It is. But because God loves us, He sent Jesus to fix our broken friendship with Him. On the cross, right? That's right, Katie. Jesus came to die on the cross to take the punishment for every bad thing we will ever do so that when we believe in Jesus, we can be forgiven and be friends with God forever. The road isn't broken anymore. And neither is our friendship with God when we believe in Jesus. Because of Jesus, we can talk to God whenever we want and spend time with him and be with him forever in heaven. So because of Jesus, I can spend time with God whenever I want? Yep, that's exactly right, whenever you want. But before the cross, people had to go to special places to spend time with God. 
Wow, I'm so thankful for Jesus. I don't know what I would do if I couldn't talk to God. Ditto. But Miss Ashley, if we can spend time with God whenever we want, why is church even important? Well, church is a gift from God, just like the temple. David knew that the temple was a gift from God, and so is our church. It's good for us to go to church and learn the word of God and worship God together. I do love going to church. Me too. I love learning Bible stories with all my friends. <laughs> Me too. I love that also. I'm really thankful for our church, and I'm really thankful for what Jesus did for all of us. Can we maybe practice God's plan? To help us remember what God did for us? Will you two help me? I would love to. Of course. Great, then let's do it. Friends, why don't you stand up with us so we can practice God's plan? Put your crowns up. And we're going to go on the count of three. One, two, three. God rules. We sinned. God provided. Jesus gives. We respond. Great job. Are you guys ready to do it really fast? All right, friends, put your crowns up with us. Ready? One, two, three. God rules. Sing God fast. Jesus respond. Good job, friends. You did it really, really fast, guys. Remember, friends, just like the temple, our church is a gift from God. And because of Jesus, we can talk to God wherever, whenever we want. So why don't we talk to him right now and thank him for that? Will you clap with me on the count of three? One, two, three. Put your hands in your lap and I'm going to pray for us. Dear God, thank you for our church. We know it's a gift from you. Thank you for what Jesus did for all of us. Because of him, we can talk to you whenever we want. Like right now. That's so cool. Thank you for loving us. We love you back. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, friends, I had such a great time with you today. So did I. Me too. And we can't wait until next time when we all come back so God can help us grow, grow, grow. 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 Bye. Bye.